Never get bored with that. Hello and welcome to another Mr. Beats Bite video and this one's a little bit different insofar as we're looking at this wonderful Sony SLHF 3000. This is the Japanese market version of the SLHF 1000 that was sold in uh, the US and other NTSC countries, no doubt. And um, this has come to me from Aaron. Thank you very much, Aaron, for sending this to me for repair. Um, it came with a note saying that he would like the capacitors on the cap stand motor changed. Um, I don't know whether it actually has a fault or whether he just wants them changed because they're surface mount, I'm guessing, but we'll see. Uh, we'll take a look at that. Um, absolutely wonderful machine. It's in great condition. Um, really very, very lovely, and I love these machines. Um, the high band, Beta Max, um, and Beta 2.3, um, and also plays Beta 1. Um, and... Does that actually record? Yeah, of course, Beta 1 as well. Uh, super high band, yes. 6, six meg, Beta 1S. Uh, so, super high quality. Um, and, uh, yeah, what a fantastic machine. So, um, before we power this up, I've got to sort out power supply problems. Um, this is 100 volts AC. Uh, we're 240 in the UK. So uh, I do have a, a UK to US adapter, but obviously that's 110, 120 volts-ish, thereabouts, uh, which is still too high for this, really. So uh, I need to sort my variable power supply out, my variable AC transformer. Um, I did try and get some um, Japanese uh, adapters, but they just weren't suitable for this type of kit. So uh, yeah, let's crack on. Okay, so before I do anything, I really need to check I can actually get 100 volts out of this reliably. Um, I've had problems with this as far as the socket is just rubbish. It's one of those horrible sort of multi-sockets that, um, like those very cheap uh, Chinese travel adapters use, and it's, it's just terrible. So I have stripped it apart. I've... Um, sort of resprung it all, so hopefully it should be reliable, but uh, we'll just do a test, I think. So, plugged in. Uh, what's interesting is this lead actually had a pat testing um, label on it, um, and I don't know how that's ever passed, because this is 10 amps, 125 volt max, and in the UK we're 240, so... <laughs> um, this doesn't actually meet UK standard, but of course US and Japan, it's absolutely fine. And that's what we're uh, going to be running that, this as. So, uh, oh. in at that end, so let's put it on, let's hope it doesn't go bang. So that's a good start. We'll just turn it up. So I'm looking to get 100 volts. Wait for the meter to catch up. And I'll probably go a little bit lower. Oh, I'll just go up to 99. 100 volts. There we go. Lovely. So, let's have a look at the, the actual meter on the front. That is actually fairly accurate. Uh, it's actually reading a little bit above 100 volts. And uh, where are we on the top? A little. So, that is actually reading. Trying to get rid of parallax, it's reading a little bit higher on there than 100 volts. So it, it it's quite cool. If I put that 100 volts, spot on 100 volts on there, there it still reads about 100 volts, 98 volts. I'm quite pleased with that. Um, so that's that's good to know. So 
Let's power this off and plug in that beater. Okay, so we're plugged in. Hopefully it'll all be okay. We know the voltage is set correctly. Um, also set up to um, monitor it, put it on the screen. Um, legend is in um, Japanese, but basically line in, monitor, and line out. Um, then you've got the remote control protocols here. Um, got the VHF, uh, sorry, UHF, VHF. Uh, so, yeah, that's really cool. Um, so, and the usual sorts of daisy training sockets, uh, which is cool. So, uh, I suppose we ought to try and turn it on. So here goes. Okay, I don't seem to be getting anything out of it. Um, okay, let's whip the top off. Okay, so this is a bit weird. I pair it on, and I'm on the back of the, um, the line sockets, and we have about 100 volts. Um, fuses look fine. So I think we've got a power supply fault which is a bit disappointing. I've, I've just got nothing at all. Um, so, yeah. How bizarre. Um, I know Aaron didn't say anything about it being dead, and it does look as if it's had a new SDK at some point, but uh, it's certainly not well now. Ah, <sighs> how bizarre. Uh, okay, I'll do some more tracks. So I do have something really odd going on. I'm not too sure what. Um, I do wonder if one of these sockets is actually switched um, from when the machine is taken out of standby. Um, but I do actually have two other power supplies which um, Aaron sent to me to be uh, refurbed. So uh, I suppose we could reverse engineer one of these. Okay, so I am just going to measure the voltage across these two fusibles. Oh, we've got nine volts there. I've got nothing there. There's 16 volts there. 20 volts there. I mean, that's that's going to be... Uh, I see. But I've got nothing. on this resistor here. Um, have I got a bad... Uh, hang on a second. That's an output, that's an output from the STK. Uh, yeah, let me just check these other power supplies and get a bit more of an idea what's going on. Right, okay, so I've worked it out. Um, those two fusible resistors, they're just on AC lines, um, so that's fine. These are the main fuses for the DC side of it. Um, looking at this power supply, I've just taken it apart. First of all, there's a really great crack through it, <laughs> which is not a good start. Um, I'm not quite sure how that actually broke, because it's... Um, how it's mounted onto here, well, I suppose it's quite possible in transit that did get broken, but uh, I mean, obviously a huge amount of weight here, and uh, yeah, it's cracked right the way through, so that adds a little bit of extra excitement. Um, but you can see here, two bridge, uh, rectifiers made up of diodes, four diodes for each um, bridge rectification, um, uh, power rail, and we've got the fuses. Um, so, uh, in, so through to here, so it's going through to this board and the SDK, um, which is what we'd expect really. So if we've got power um, here, then we have to assume that we've got a problem on the SDK side of it, on this board. So, uh, let's just test that. 
Okay, so here, here we go. <laughs> See if we can get the meat to stand up. Now we'll say the contacts are not that good. So we've got 16 volts and 20 volts ish. Okay, so my feeling is we've got a problem here um, on the STK board, and I have a feeling we might have a bad STK chip. Uh, it does look as if it's been at least re... I don't know... reinstalled with um, new heatsink compound. But um, I just wonder if that's actually got a, a, a new, in inverted commas, chip. And that is going to be the problem. Uh, these copies, they're just not good. And... I uh, just have a bad feeling about this, but uh, yeah, let's crack on. Okay, so it is powered on. Um, still nothing. But what's odd, and unfortunately I've got the manual, but the manual is for an HF1000 and 3000, and the power supply um, uh, diagram for the 1000 that's included is wrong. Um, all the connectors are totally different, which is a bit odd to me um so it's not for the 3000 then <laughs> um unless i'm missing something I'll, I'll need to go through it and just make sure I, I i'm not losing the plot but checking voltages for example here i've got like 50 volt rail um I've got five volts um I've got 12 volts I've, I've got voltages and that sdk must be working uh probably um, unless there's a rail missing. So I'm starting to wonder if this has actually got damaged in transit. Um, and something is just not right. Because Aaron was saying that this, this worked. This was working when it left him. It's arrived here and it doesn't. Oh, it's really frustrating. <laughs> it's just like, I mean, it only needed a service. Um... And, uh, yeah, maybe some caps changed. But, yeah, it's just, it's really just confusing me as to why it's, um, it's just suddenly dead. Um, in other news, um, these chips, I was really debating if these are original. Um, I did contact the seller that Aaron bought these from, which is, um, Nico. Um, electronics on um, eBay and they assure me these are new old stock um, I'm still not terribly convinced um, I, mean, I suppose it does have the numbers on the back um, I suppose it could be printed on it was just that just the way the tape took off the the, the text um, to me, that doesn't seem right, but yeah, anyway, I think what I'll do is take off the bottom cover and uh, we'll take a look. So everything's looking good underneath, no damage or anything and nothing I wouldn't expect. Um, there's the bottom of the deck, uh, these plastic covers that so you like to use on some machines. Bit of dust in there, I'll clean that all out. Um, but just sort of looking at the board underneath, just in case there's any damage, but there isn't. I can't think that there would be, but it just seems really odd. Um, so I think what I'm going to do next is actually take the power supply out. Capacitors have arrived, so uh, lots to go out there. Uh, I've got a few for a couple of other jobs as well. Um, but uh, I've got all the key ones that I think will need changing on these power supplies. So. Uh, yeah, let's crack on. So I'm going to replace the capacitors on the power supply actually from the HF3000 uh, machine first. Um, I'd just love to see that machine working, so I'm going to get that done first. I'm not going to show it on camera, um, but uh, yeah, let's get and do that. Um, literally, I'm, I'm changing capacitors, um, the little capacitors, um, physically small ones, 
um, and the ones that are high voltage um, ratings because uh, they're probably going to be the ones that are going to cause the most problems so yeah let's crack on so I've pretty much changed, well I've changed all the capacitors that I wanted to change, possibly with the exception of, of this one, um, which is a 220 microfarad at 63 volts capacitor. It does actually test fine, um, there's a Rubicon as well, so it's, it's good, but I don't know, I just maybe would have liked to have changed that. Um, all the rest, all done, so here, here. Uh, this cluster here, 22 microfarads, 16 volts they are. These are 22 microfarads, I think at 50 volts. Um, yeah. And um, we've got a 63 volt, 47 microfarad one here. And a 63 volt uh, rated 10 microfarad one here. So fairly high values. Um, I've tested all the capacitors I've taken out. Uh, the ones on the left, these were low, um, low reading. Um, a couple were uh, quite high ESR. Um, the one that really surprised me was this 1000 microfarad 6.3 volts, because uh, when I actually removed it from the board, it had leaked. Um, it was wet underneath, so I've, I've cleaned that with isopropyl. I uh, don't know whether you can see it now. Not well, you can see a little bit of wet between the plastic and the, the rubber material. Um, yeah, not really, um, but yeah, it was quite wet. Um, old one as well. At some point, these two capacitors here, um, these uh, 22 microfarad um, 50 volt ones somebody had changed one of them so this was the original Alna and then this was another one I can actually see what the brand was on it you probably tell me uh, when you see it it's that one um, Chemicon or something um, and the replacement one was awful uh, it's really low value and um, quite high ESR in fact that was the worst one out <laughs> of all of them was the replacement um, and the other one, the Elna one, uh, which I think's that one, yeah, uh, was actually fine. Um, just checking that is actually. I have actually put the right one in because I thought when I looked at that then, it's 2.2. .2. No, that's not the one. It is. Is it that one? 22. So it's that one. I thought I was going mad for a minute. It's 22, 50 volts. So that one was actually alright, and the replacement one was bad. So, interesting stuff. So, um, this is about ready to go back together. I just want to clean up around here a little bit, just get the dust off, might as well. Um, that looks dusty, but it's not. It's just uh, a little bit marked. I might give it a clean anyway. So yeah, I'll put this one together and uh, we'll crack on. So the power supply's uh, back in. Uh, I have only put in two screws at the moment because uh, I will more than likely want to be testing the other two power supplies in this machine uh, just to make sure that they're okay. Um, but I do want to test this first, so. Uh, yeah, let's crack on. So this is the second power supply and this has similar sort of crack. Um, so I'm going to have to just clean off some of this flux so I can see what's going on. Um, we're going to have to repair across these as well. Uh, might do it a slightly different way on this one. So the second power supply is done. I can see quite clearly the crack there. What I have done this time, rather than using insulated wire, uh, multi-strand. I've just used single core um, wire, which I think will be absolutely fine to be honest. I mean it's not going to go too far. It, it, 
has the option of going um, anywhere at once, but I think that'll be fine. Um, I was tempted to put maybe some hot glue or something just across, but I don't know. I, do, I, I can't see there'll be a problem. Um, famous last words, I suppose. But, uh, yeah, I did do that one as well. I mean, it's not broken. The crack only goes I think the crack only goes as far as there to be fair but I've done these two just in case um, so yeah uh, also done the caps so yeah um, and I can sort of see what Aaron was saying about it sort of possibly running hot I don't think it is um, but uh, some of these caps are decidedly quite black um, and I think it's just been in um, a smoky environment probably something like a, a wood burner or something um, but we'll see I mean I will put this in it has also had a another STK chip at some point so um, sort of looking at the bits of it I can see it does look as if it's uh, from the time so I it is actually a legit chip which is cool um it's good heat sink compound on there as well so i'm happy to put this back together and uh yeah we'll try that um after we've tried the the other one the original one from that hf 3000 so let's crack on well from that second power supply this capacitor which i thought would be terrible is actually testing absolutely fine but the um, 16 volt um, 22 microfarad, I mean, look at that. <laughs> it's not even seeing it as an electrolytic. Um, if we just go to another one, 20 picofarad, I mean, they're just, and they're all the same. Um, all these three, uh, which are three grouped on the transformer um, PCB just are so bad um uh, let's try let's try this one not too bad i mean and where's picking up it's picking up an ir <laughs> from somewhere um i don't know where that's coming from anyway Yeah, that one's really low as well. So that was well worth doing, um, that recap. Um, I mean, I don't know. 20 volt, 22 microfarad. Let's try that one. It's picking up. <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. 17. So, uh, yeah, that's not great. Um, yeah, so interesting. Um, yeah, that power supply is well and truly just not happy. Um, the rest of the caps, the big caps, seem fine uh, so I've left those um, one thing if you see that bulging on the top of the of the capacitors so you can see it's sort of got like a bulge on the top there don't worry about it it's it's just literally air pressure change in air pressure with age they'll start to dome like that um, and of course there's nowhere nowhere really for the uh the expansion to take place so don't worry about it um and like i say they test fine so i'm quite happy uh to uh leave that just notice that fuse there looks as if it might have popped uh let's just whip that out and test it and indeed testing it it is open circuit so there you go that's interesting um i've not powered it on yet so 
it's going to be one of those things where I put a fuse in it and uh, just see when we test it what happens. Okay, so the next thing is to check the capstan boot, and this actually has the plastic cover, uh, which quite a, quite a few later decks actually did have, um, which is interesting, <laughs> interesting sort of addition. So I'm going to remove this can top first. Obviously, never done this before, so forgive me if you're going. Oh no, don't do that. Uh, so self tapper. Um, there's the can lid, and it's literally just screening. It's a screening can, and it looks like we just have little plastic clips that actually just lock this in. Uh, oh, okay, so there's clip there, clip there, clip there. And it comes off it's sort of that's that's just a locating bit it's actually quite interesting how that does go together so uh caps well the electrolytics um i would be very tempted great motor um i'd be very tempted to just leave those to be honest uh what i will be doing is removing this all of this oh gosh yeah the glue uh, it's got brown glue as well, so we know that's bad. So that's got to come off. Um, so I'll do that next and uh, we'll crack on. So there it is. It's pretty clean. Uh, it's not perfect, but um, the pins are free of glue. There's no glue in between them, which is really what you want. Um, and uh, my goodness, it took quite a lot of cleaning to get that glue off. Um, I must have spent about a quarter of an hour just very carefully um, removing the glue. Um, use the toothbrush, usual method, just very, very gently, of course. Um, you don't want to be putting too much pressure on those leads. Um, I have heard of people breaking um, the leads off uh, while cleaning them. You, you're doing it too hard, <laughs> if that's the case. Um, but, uh, yeah, so... Looking really good, happy with that. Um, like I say, I'm not going to do anything with the capstan motor. I'm just wondering, it looks terribly familiar. Um, and F30 maybe? I don't know. Um, uh, I'll do some checks on that because that's that's actually a really cool motor um, to, to have because it does use um, electrolytics rather than surface mount um, chips. Uh, I don't envisage there being any problems with this motor at all. Um, so I'm happy just to put the cover back on and uh, yes, uh, all will be good. What I will do before I do put the cover on is I will just clean the cap stand because with that cover off I can just turn this and just make sure that everything is off the, the capstan itself. So I'll do that next. Okay, so I've cleaned the capstan now. Um, piece of paper, uh, it's about 20 mil, uh, just under an inch. Uh, you don't want to go the full width of the, the opening for the capstan um, because you have to do it at a bit of an angle, but because you have to do it at a bit of an angle, you will get all of it even though it's quite a bit less uh, isopropyl onto the um, paper, and then, and I mean, this is this is perfectly fine to do, um, unless it's really heavily soiled. Let's move it along a bit. Yeah, so quite a bit coming off there. Uh, Turn it over. Can actually feel that there's quite a bit of contamination there. But it's getting it off, so I'm happy with that. Should be all at the bottom edge. So fantastic. That's. Um, pretty much clean that up. Uh, we'll just give it a visual check, but uh, yeah, we should be good to go. 
So there's a cap stand that's all good. It's actually quite mucky. There's a tiny bit of crud on there. I'll just get that off in a minute. But otherwise it's pretty good. And you can also see the black gear. Um, and that's the one that usually splits. This one is actually looking very good. So that's great. Okay, so uh, yeah, let's uh, let's crack on. Okay, so let's put the cover back on and put it on the right way it does help. So put that in, that bit in first, then this bit second, I'm guessing, is probably the best way. And just manoeuvre it into position. Make sure the clips engage, which they have. Nothing's been fouled. Oh, there we go. So heard it sort of seat itself nicely. Super. So then, cover, just giving it a quick clean underneath for what it's worth. and I will just give this a wipe over just so it's quite hot today uh, as I'm doing this and uh, I don't want to leave potentially I mean my hands are pretty pretty dry but I don't want to leave sweat marks and like sweaty fingerprints on there because that's what makes these things go um, with the salt of the sweat makes them go minimize prop out because the other thing is everything evaporates so quickly just to get the uh, salt off from the fingerprints so there we go let's do that the one I'm in here um, I've dusted this board off, you wouldn't really know it, but um, the dust is really sort of, it's on there, it's well and truly on there, so I've done my best, I've removed the loose dust, um, but uh, yeah, I'm not going to go in um, and sort of really go for it because um, that's when you start doing damage and it's one thing um, cleaning it, it's another thing when you start damaging components so let's put the screws back in there is actually and I think it was the case when I took it apart originally there's never been a screw here you can actually see the solder um, I don't even quite make it out, but the solder is not pressed, not like here, um, from the um, screw going in. So, yeah, there's never a screw there, and that's probably a really good reason why they decided not to do that. I'm just going to lift this board quick, we'll take a look. So this board is SS62, this one is VI18, and uh, well, you can see the mechanism there for the um, for 
the front drawer, which is really very cool. Very, very nice. Um, all nice and tidy. I will give this a quick clean, but I'm not going to worry about it too much. Um, just get the, the, the worst of the dust off it. Not that there's a lot there, but um, yeah, I will do that. And um, yeah, we'll take it from there. I do also want to clean these. Um, I was considering taking the board out, but given that there's all of this here, just to clean these, seems excessive. I've got no reason to take that board out. So I'm going to leave it. Um, there probably is a really crafty way to do it. There's also a, a lip, a metal um, strip that goes across here. So uh, it's actually quite sharp. You cut your finger on that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'll give this a clean. I'll give these a clean. Um, and uh, I suppose we'll give it a try. Well, I don't know whether they look at on camera, but um, they're certainly a lot better than they were. So, yeah, they're not perfect. I would like them to really be shining. And you can sort of see, because I haven't removed the board, the difference between the old and the new, on, especially on the gold contacts. But, uh, yeah, that's fine. The boards, it's like it's been in a kitchen or, like, food... Um, sort of uh, steam or whatever has been near it. Um, because on the top especially, it's just so grimy. Um, and it's like a layer of, of sort of oily sort of substance. So that's not great. But it is only very slight, like very, very slight. So I just think for a short while, maybe it's been exposed a bit to, uh, to cooking fumes. But... Um, I mean, it's an incredibly tidy machine otherwise, and uh, the boards, I mean, the boards underneath seem great. So, yeah, it's just literally just this top panel where you can really see it, and that the bottom panel uh, on this side also looked a little bit, you know, the dust wasn't lifting off. Um, but like I said, I'm not going to meddle too much. I've cleaned off some of this. I'm going to leave, leave it, though. Um, yeah, because... Uh, can cause more problems than it's worth. Okay, so here we go. Put it on. Excellent. So far, so good. Lovely. Okay, so I'm going to leave this one here for now. Uh, so this will be part one. Part two will be next week, uh, where we get to finish off all the bits and pieces and um, actually test the machine as, as well, which will be really cool. Uh, so until then, uh, thank you very much for watching, and please like and subscribe as well, means a lot, and I will see you in another video. Bye for now.